good morning everyone. Um, hope you are well. I'm at pattern-collections.com. Uh, some people ask if this is an app. It is not an app. It's just the website. I access it on this phone. Um, I'm going to go to Pattern Focus, but before I go to Pattern Focus, it's Monday, and I want to remind you that if you like this website and you like all the patterns that are uh, created, all the new stuff that's coming up, like all the time, um, if you would click on this PayPal donate button and wait for this very slow phone to go, um, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to make a donation of 5, 10, 20, some other amount. Uh, you can donate with PayPal or with your debit or credit card. And um, if you click this little box here, it will make it a monthly donation regularly. Um, if you have the extra dollar or two to spare, uh, Ina would really appreciate it. She does not ask me to um, make this uh, plea to her. She, she is very humble and um, really doesn't want all the fuss, but uh, I feel like it's really important that if you have the extra cash um, and that this uh, website really, uh, you use it all the time and it's something that's a resource for you that 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 you can't just live without, um, please donate what you can because she pays for the running of the website out of her pocket. And I know, I know for a fact that um, these websites pay like are charged by the number of visits and stuff. And look at page views. Since this site opened in 2016, six million, almost seven million page views. And she's had to pay for each and every time somebody clicks on there. That's a lot, okay? I know it's not a dollar per click, it's it's pennies per click, but pennies per click under seven million adds up. It really does. So if you guys wouldn't, uh, would be able to help her offset those costs, I would appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to go to Pattern Focus to find today's pattern. If you hear some dog-like noises in the background, I am a puppy sitting this week, this weekend. So um, I've got her in the studio here with me because I didn't want her running around in the yard. Uh, it's it's going to be a hot day. So I wanted her in here where, where it was nice and cool. So we're going to do in and out mandala the way I, oh, let me, let me let you know about the month. Uh, you're going to see these all in August, but of course I'm drawing them in July. And the July month, we uh, are, we have Scrapping Shell uh, has chosen the patterns this month, and she's decided on focusing on all patterns that are done by Ina and Nicole. They're the two, this is Ina's baby, this is this is her thing. She started this website, she started the um, Pattern Dash Collections, she started CPT, um, Creative Pattern Tangling, um, but Nicole is her right hand woman. And so between the two of them, they do 99% of the work on on the website and uh, at the Facebook page. Awesome, awesome ladies. And um, so we're just shouting them out this month by all of these patterns were created by one or the other of them, all 31 of them. So, you know, shout out to them for all their creativity. And what I did is I chose um, patterns that I've not done uh, so far. At least I don't think I have. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Goodness sakes. Anyway, this one's called In and Out Mandala. Let's zoom in here. You're going to make yourself a Rangoli grid. If you don't know what that is, you can go to the website and and uh, type in Rangoli. You'll find how to make this. It's basically uh, a mandala shape. 
done in pencil. All the green is always pencil. So do it in pencil. And this particular one is, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four. So it's an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight section uh, mandala pie. But you could probably do it with a any number of sections that you want. You don't have to do eight as long as it's an even number. And it'll always be an even number if you take a circle and divide it into even sections. So um, you don't have to do it in eight. Eight is like probably the minimum. Um, but you, well, I don't know why you couldn't do it in six. You could do it in six if you wanted. Anyways, you want to make yourself a Rangoli grid. That's what all I'm saying. And in the middle circle, so you have three tiers of, of circle. In the middle circle, you want to put a dot at these intersections. Okay. And then you're going to do this little curvy line to connect two dots. Skip one, connect two dots. Okay. And then you're going to do this curvy line going inward, connecting the dots going the other way. And you can make this curve and this curve as shallow or as deep as you want. And you could even make this curve um, another shape, like a, a triangle or whatever you want. Switch it up. Make it your own, right? And then the next thing we're going to do is to make sort of like a petal shape. So from the middle, about the middle here to about here and about the middle here. So you kind of want to hit these dots there. You want to come up into this petal like shape. Boy, it's getting hot in here. Up into this petal like shape. Okay. As long as you're kind of equidistant, it's all that matters. And then the next thing is to just do this little V shape, and then you're done with, oh no, one more. <laughs> Silly me. And then connect here. So that is the end product right here. Once, if you shade it, you can color it. You can do variations. You can do extra lines. You can, instead of doing that petal like shape, you can just do a roundy shape. You can do all sorts of things with it. I think I'm going to try maybe varying this first shape. Either this one or this one or both. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, first thing we need to do is draw our Rangoli grid. Uh, I need to pick a piece of paper. Ooh, it's hot. It is supposed to be well over 100 again today, and it is starting to warm up in here. What, what size paper do I want, and what color do I want? I don't know. Well, I clearly want a, a square one. And I like to do them on a big one, so let's do that one. I like this Helix Circle Maker. Can you see where it says Helix? There. This is a Helix Circle Maker. Uh, you can, there's a link to it in the description box below. But, um, you know, you do you. Don't have to. What did I do here? Did I mark this? I'm trying to remember if I marked this for an 8. Did I mark it for an 8? That's for a 12. That's for an 8. Should I do an 8? Or should I do a 12? You know that? I think I might do a 12. Grid. Yeah, let me do a 12. I'm going to do a 12. That will change it up also. So I'm going to find the center of my page. I'm going to find the center just by going corner to corner 
and just putting a little mark and then going corner to corner and putting a little mark actually I could I could do all the way across and then that will be the center of my paper line up my zeros along this line Zero, 180 come on go in there why are you not sometimes it's easier to use just a regular compass but I don't have one I have this thing so this is what I use Right like that. Okay, so that is going to be a nice straight line. Um, I put a little bit of blue tack or like blue tack underneath to keep it from sliding while I do my markings. So that's going to be straight across, and uh, I actually don't want this half because that's not where it ends up. Good, Don. Okay, that's all right. It's all right. We'll remember. So I want an outside one. I want one circle on the inside. I sometimes have troubles with this inside one getting it to go smoothly around, so I help it out with my finger. And then one somewhere in the middle of that. It sometimes gets stuck. It's not the perfect tool, but it works really good for making pie shapes. It's more for that than the drawing of the circle, but um, I'm going to follow my little blue dots. I've made some orange dots. I You probably can't see that on here. Maybe over here you can. I've made orange dots at... Uh, oh, the orange dots are the 12. The blue dots are the 8s, I think. So let me go. I'm going to follow my orange dots. So I've got orange dot here and here. What are you doing down there, dog? She's decided to make a bed under my feet in the carpet. She's just digging. Trying to get comfy. I don't blame you, dog. I do not blame you. So we're going to do like this and like this and like this. And back to where we started. Okay. So I've created myself a pencil grid. I've decided to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve spots instead of eight. That's okay. I can do whatever I want, right? And then I can start drawing with a pen. I might have made this pencil grid a little bit too dark, but I wanted you to be able to see it. And do this pen. Um, I've had a lot of questions lately about what pen do, do I use. This camera does not seem to be at quite the right angle, but that's all right. Uh, I use whatever pen uh, is on sale at the time I buy pens. And that's absolutely the truth. I have used this brand. Don't even know how to say that. That's what I have right now. I try to get uh, water-based, water-resistant. Try to get them that say uh, archival. This one does not. So would not be my first choice. But, you know, it's what I have. I, I, don't, I don't spend a ton of money on art supplies. But I have found that, you know, if you... If you find a brand that you really like, then, you know, keep using it. Absolutely. I have these 
Marabou finer gra fine liners, Marabou. Those ones are, they don't say on them whether they're, um, I know they're waterproof. They don't say whether they're archival. I have Microns. I have, what's the other brand I have out here right now? I have STA. I have, what other brands do I own? I own Copic Multiliner. I own, I'm trying to find the other, the different brands. I have used these ones, Zig Millenniums. I kind of like these. They have a little bit fatter barrel to me that are easier to hang on to. Um, anyway, I use whatever's on sale at the time. As long as they have the right sizes, I prefer 0 0.01 or uh, up to a 0.3. 1, 2, and 3 are my standard, usually, drawing pens. But I do use all the way up to the 8 or even the brush pen. Um, use them all. And I do use those teeny tiny 0, 0.05. I use these as well. But I don't use that as often because I just don't tend to, to draw that fine. But um, I use them all. Let's see, do I want to draw on an 03 or an 01 today? Let's draw on an 03. Okay, so at this intersection, this center intersection, I want to draw a dot at each of these intersections. Uh, like so. Okay, simple. And then I'm going to do this way. Kind of comes out a little bit. This curve. Like that. Skip that one. Go this way, like that, like that, like that, like that, and like that. And then coming this way, I want to still come out like this, but I think I'm going to make it more of a petal-like shape. Like this. because I wanted a different shape in the middle. Uh, okay. And then we want from here, I know this would normally be like that, so about here I'm going to come up and in the middle of, I want to come to about here. I'm going to come up like that. So I want to go to here and I want to go to here. I'm going to just mark those spots right in the middle straight up from that curve. Come through that intersection and up. Come through this intersection. That's how you're going to keep them kind of consistent. That. 
That one was not near as consistent as I would have liked, but that's okay. Sort of a flame-like shape. Like that. Okay. Do I have this light all the way up? Yeah, I guess I do. Alrighty. And then the sample has you do this sort of a V here. Is that what I want to do? I guess so. Okay. So I'm going to go to this spot. I'm going to mark that all the way around so I am semi-consistent as to where I'm headed. I'm actually going to go like this. Right, and then go the other way. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. Okay. Like that, and then do this curve, or you can make it a different shape. I think I'm going to come up a little bit higher than that round. Still going to make it a curve, but I think I'm going to go outside that. Are you getting hot, dog? I am too. I'm almost done drawing. A few more minutes and then we can go in the house where the air is working. I have to turn the air conditioner off for filming because it's just too loud. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Not sure I like these fingers that I made, but you know what? It's what I did, so that's all right. Um, I'm going to erase all these guidelines at this point because I don't need them anymore. And you see, I did draw a little too dark because I like to just loosely uh, erase and it's not all coming off which means I drew too dark which means I'm going to have to push a little harder with my erasing which I don't like doing yep I drew too hard All right, now I think I've got that erased good enough. That's, that's an eraser, dog. You may not eat the eraser. No, it's not for you. She's a sweetheart. Okay, so now we can embellish. Um, decide exactly what you want to do for embellishments, I think. In here, I want to actually fill this with circles. My tummy's grumbling. I ate breakfast. My tummy should not be grumbling.
how long have I been drawing? 25 minutes. See, when I do these Rangoli grids, I really need to just go ahead and draw them ahead of time. By now, you guys know how to draw a Rangoli grid, and if you don't, you can go back and look at an older video. I'm going to stop wasting drawing time by drawing the grid. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that is that necessary anymore, or do you think that beginners still are going to need that? Because if beginners still need that, I will absolutely 100% continue to put it in my videos. But if you think I can just show you the grid already done, I think I might do that because I feel like I don't have enough time to draw. Okay, I like that a lot. Like that a lot. And then I think maybe maybe we're gonna do another one of these inside here. I think I'm going to put a spiral right there. Why? Just because I feel like it. There is no... There's no right or wrong in this drawing style, which is what really is very freeing. Um, once you know the basic shapes, you know, your spirals, your ovals, your teardrops, your lines, your triangles, once you have those basic shapes down, you can put them in any order you want. Different techniques like feathering, um, And do one of these questions. I, I like to do questions out of this book. This book is called If Questions for the Game of Life by Evelyn McFarland and James Saywell. I don't remember where I was last. Did I do those? Uh, da, 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 da. Don't remember where I was last. It's been such a long time since I've picked up a pen. Uh, I think I did that question. I think I'm, I think I'm over here. 
If your home were to be totally destroyed by fire, but you could save just one thing, what would it be? Um, I think my computer hard drive, because that's where all my pictures are. That's where all my pictures are. It's the most important thing to me. Not exactly sure what I'm doing. This is sort of like the, what is it called, the log cabin technique. I'm just going around and making layers. Turning my paper so that it's easier for me to draw. For me, this curve, because I'm right-handed, this curve going this way is easier. If I was left-handed, then the curve going this way would probably be easier. But I'm not, I'm right handed, so. So I'm all the way, I'm all the way around. Usually you would do this log cabin technique all the way around your shape, but I don't want to. I'm just going to do it on one half of the shape. Dog, I know you want to leave because it's hot in here. We're almost done because I don't have that much time. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it like this and just put like that. A big circle, a medium circle. And a small boat. Big circle, medium circle, and a dot. We're not going to color this because that would take too long. So I do think I want a little bit more contrast. I know. Honey, it, I know it's hot in here, but if I can handle it, you can handle it. We're almost done. I do want a little bit more contrast. I think I'm going to fill in right there. And since I want to fill it in, I'm going to use my brush pen. brush pen is starting to fray so maybe I'm not going to use this brush pen well if I pull it like that it works all right I may have to come back with a different pen and fill in the gaps because I don't think it's going to be as smooth as I want it to be and that's okay I'm just going to use it to fill in the majority of it and then Come back with a different pen to fill in the gaps. Yeah, honey, I know. It's hot. Want me to just let you out? Okay, let me let you out. You can go run in the yard and go, go sniff at your neighbor dog friends. Maybe she had to go potty. She went way right straight over to the area where she uses the the dirt. We have one little dirt patch where the animals can do their business and not do it on the artificial turf. She went straight over there, so maybe she just had to go. She's good at telling us that. Oh, 
I'm not always good at listening to her, but she's good at telling. Let's do another question. Question O today. If you were to have your friends in private attribute a single quality to you, what would you want it to be? I have no idea what that question means. And this one I'm just going to skip because we've had similar ones. And I, I just, I'm not going to do it. It says, if you had to kill someone you know, who would it be and how would you do it? I'm not even going to go there because it's an inappropriate question. Uh, next one is, if a, f if a photograph of one part of your body were to be used, in an advertisement, which part would you want to be used and for what product or service? Um, I'm, I'm just fine with showing my hands. Now, I would probably want them to be freshly manicured and properly groomed. Not like what they are now. Oh, they're in bad shape right now. Especially this finger. This finger got smashed at work and I lost I actually had lost the, the fingernail down to about here. Oh, it hurts so bad. Um, it has since grown out because you know how I, I, I draw ahead of time, right? You guys know that. Um, so like today is somewhere in the beginning part of July and it's going to be shown somewhere in the beginning part of August, right? Well, the last time I drew was in the beginning part of June. I'm serious. I have not, I have not drawn for this channel in a, almost an entire month. And it turned out that there was a darn good... It was very good that my schedule wasn't it was such that I could be that far ahead you know I told you that once before that one of the reasons I get this far ahead and draw a whole month in advance is so that if something should happen in life because life does happen um that I don't have to worry. Well, life happened. It was, it was, it was a month. Um, we had, um, we lost Aunt Betty. Uh, she, she was 90 years old. She had dementia. She'd been suffering with uh, cancer for almost six years, but that's not what got her. She then had a stroke at the beginning of, was it the end of May, beginning of June? Um, and then while recovering from the stroke, she uh, contracted COVID at the nursing home and then got pneumonia and then passed away. Um, yeah, that was sad. Well, that was a tough, tough time for all of us. Um, besides that, another coworker of mine also um, got COVID. Uh, those of us who worked with him closely had to self-isolate. I uh, actually work opposite shifts from him. And so, and I'd been very, very 
uh, thorough in making sure that the cleaning protocols were being done at my workstation and and so um, I was constantly constantly at least once an hour sometimes once every half hour or so cleaning all the work surfaces that I touch um, and the common surfaces so uh, I'm good but he got it and um, luckily he he did not come to work with active symptoms he was very good about calling as soon as he had any sort of symptom and he knew that as soon as he f wasn't feeling well that, that he probably had it because apparently he had several family members who also had it so he was on the lookout for the symptoms caught them as early as possible He's doing well now, but he's still, he's, he's recovering. He says he's still not feeling his best and he doesn't know when he's coming back to work, but it's been at least, at least two weeks that he's been out. Maybe it's been three. Anyway, it made, has made it very, very difficult at work. We got in a new, two new staff members both transferred from other stores so at least um, they knew what they were doing um, but you know it's always difficult to change staff and uh, oh and we had inventory and it's just been tough at work the last two or three weeks and I just haven't had time to draw there's just between work and and life I have not had time to draw so I'm just thankful that I have the time today and that um, and that I'm ahead so that I don't feel the pressure although you know this is not my full-time job this is this is my stress relief this is my hobby and um, I did do some drawing on my own but mostly I did that coloring uh, and testing out of those pencils I did more coloring than I did drawing this month coloring is also very stress relieving that's cool. I want I want something dark along these edge though. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and and bring another dark element right here. Like that. Oh much better. So yeah, it's been a tough month. And of course, um, as I'm drawing this right now at the end of, no, first part of July, we are experiencing another, another wave of, of COVID in our area. So the few things that did open up are shutting back down. Um, so we were able to go to restaurants uh, and eat inside with uh, precautions, with you know um, limited capacity, with with every other table or tables removed, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's that's gone again. Now we're going out to restaurants. They can do outdoor dining. So if they have an outdoor dining area and a lot of cities are allowing uh, businesses to have a temporary outdoor dining area on either the sidewalk in front of their place of business or in the parking lot in front of the restaurants, which is cool. Um, the, re the couple of restaurants that we've been to 
have really been thankful for our business because it's been super slow and those poor people, you know, they're all small businesses. Even the franchises, even, you know, Taco Bell and Del Taco and all of those, most of them are independently owned and operated. And so they're a franchise. They're, they're not, they're still a, a small business, believe it or not. What was this called? This was called in and out Mandela. Okay, and there we go. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, I could do some shading to it, but I actually like the bold kind of tribal graphic quality that this is is doing. I, I like that. So I think I'm going to leave it just as it is. There we go. So you guys have a really great day. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any more drawing today or if I'm just going to wait till tomorrow because it is now just hot in here again. It's almost 80 degrees in here. <sighs> It's supposed to be over 100. Yesterday it got up to like 107 or 108. And it was like 95 degrees inside the studio. Way too hot to draw. Too hot and sweaty. Um, so I don't think I'm going to draw anymore today. Get up early tomorrow. The rest of the week I think I'll get up early and try to get some drawing in before 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, see how that goes. Alright, you guys have a great day. I will see you on the next video. Go out and do something nice for someone today, okay? And um, I'll be back. See ya.